circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Bad. the Stogie oh, yeah. Geek Show. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to review a cigar, the basics. So I, it was, we were in a meeting today, and I was like, I want to talk about like how you should review a cigar, how you should not review a cigar, some tips and tricks for reviewing cigars, give a little insight into our process, and I'm... I started like jotting notes and talking, and I'm like, well, like I have way more than five. <laughs> so I tried to start with the five most basic uh, things mm-hmm. that I've been learning over the years about reviewing cigars. Certainly, Coop has had influence on this. Stogie Sand has had influence on this. Many of the great cigar reviewers from all the folks at Cigar Aficionado to all the bloggers out there have uh, been reading reviews for a long time. So here are some of the basics. Mm-hmm. Try and smoke more than one. It's not always feasible. As much time as I... Like to spend smoking cigars, have to smoke cigars because right. I can smoke in my office, which is a luxury that's just awesome. I do try and smoke uh, more than one. However, in Stogies of the Week, typically that's a one cigar review when we review them for the week because we're reviewing six or seven for the week. Um, but you should smoke at least two. Definitely. Um, if, when we do smoke one, like I try and go back and smoke the same cigar and kind of report back. Sure. Like, oh, you know, my original review was Fiverr. You know, now it's ass press. Try one or ass worthy. Ass worthy. Ass worthy. That was ass worthy. That's what we did. Like that's also from the ass press episode, yes. right? Um, so <laughs> try and smoke more than just one, right? I mean, when you do the blending process, you guys probably smoke more than one of the same blend mm-hmm. before you choose the final blend. Absolutely, of course. because you can't develop all your opinions about it when you're mm-hmm. smoking just one. No. Um, Certainly when you're test, test blending as well. Well, and you pick up something different every time, every, you, time. every time you smoke a cigar. So, Which gets to my second point, which is to smoke cigars under the same conditions. I think that when I noticed significant differences between the first time I smoked a cigar, the second, and the third, it's if I smoked them in a different place, right? And there are some obvious things that as reviewers you have to make, uh, take into consideration. Uh, that is like if you're smoking in your car or outside, or on the, the lake, or the pond, or on the golf course. Like, not the time to so review a cigar. Someday, if we sell enough cigars, we'll have a lake and a That's boat right. and a... A, yeah, I, a pond cigar. Yeah, this a is a bass cigar. fishing yeah. cigar. Yeah. This is a flounder fishing cigar. Listen, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I want to be you. That's all I'm saying. You might have a full-time Uber driver. Jesus. But that's amazing. <laughs> so, but uh, if you're going to review, review... So, if you're always reviewing cigars in your car... Then, like, go for it. And, like, whoever wants to create the, I don't know, car cigar review blog, like, all mm. the, you're, because if you're going to smoke all the same, or the same cigar more than once and different cigars in your car, sure. all the time in the same condition. Can consistent baseline. Yeah. Can I, can I yeah. pl- play devil's advocate a little bit? Sure. So, I, I, for those of you watching, I have a cheat sheet here because there's a computer here. And I that agree with, I agree Very with point one. number three. <laughs> yeah. And, um, well, now you're getting, okay. I know, but I'm not going to go there. But point number two and three are very similar in some respects. Yes, yes. In other words, if you, you might smoke a cigar in an environment or in a place where it doesn't give it the cigar justice, and you might need to smoke it somewhere else, right? When the cigar shows are in Vegas? Yeah. Cigars taste different in Vegas to me. Well, they it, you know what? New, Orle- ex- New Orleans was worse. Yeah, the extreme opposite, oh, right? I mean, I smoked my own cigar. Mm-hmm. When I first got there, before I started handing out the samples in New Orleans, and I'm like, this is not my cigar. Nothing could be a testament to number two, like your statement just did, yeah, right? I, I, I mean, smoked my own cigar in a and different I'm environment, like, and it, it tasted different. But it was so hot and humid, and they sat, on, mm-hmm. you know, they sat in that condition until they came off the pallet and went to my booth, that it, it changed the cigar dramatically. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, what uh, Mike is talking about number three is just, uh, I don't know, be mindful 
of food and drink. I'm, I, I, there are huge. reviewers that say, look, I'm only going to review. I'm not listening to what Jared's saying. I'm, only I, I'm so review. glad that Jared is on the producer's Who gave microphone. gave him a microphone? Because, <laughs> oh. it, it, listen. Security. It, listen. He's just wrestling <laughs> it from the production staff. <laughs> can I tell everyone out there that there's few people I like more in this interview than Jared, and I still can't figure out why. <laughs> but I do really like Jared. He's a tr- For those of you that don't know, we're talking about Jared, who's the VP of sales for Kristoff. Tremendous guy. Drives me nuts when I'm on the air anywhere. <laughs> I mean, can I tell you? That's one of his qualities. Yeah, no, I, lo- we, I love you, Jared. We, we but no one can we hear admi- you. We, we admire you, Jared. We do. Um, so, but Paul admires you. I love you. But uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> go ahead. Be mindful of food and drink. Right? I'm not saying you always have to drink the same drink or always eat the same food when you're viewing a cigar, but be mindful of how it's going to impact that. Like I can't just. Drink water every time I review a cigar. Like no. I just, I just can't. That's because you're an alcoholic. But that has nothing. To, <laughs> but okay, go. But but I, like, <laughs> I like coffee. But so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is have like a, a regular rotation of drinks that you will uh, consume while you're having a cigar, and try and avoid and food too. But try and avoid the extremes. Like if you go to out to lunch and you eat Asian food and it's ridiculously spicy, right. when you come back and review a cigar. Your palate is not right, right? It is, and it's the same thing. Like if you've got, um, what is it, the buy water? That's like a grapefruit yeah. fizz drink. I if I drink one of those, well, I'm like, you must my review that, schedule is shot. You my must get that at the yacht club. Where the hell? What? What is this? <laughs> it's, it's like the the. Are we get it. The Bonachores. <laughs> I do belong to Bonachore. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. We, I know. we had that discussion. <laughs> we had that discussion before. <laughs> Can we get Stogie Santa on Bonachore? They with umbrellas at Bonachore. You can smoke there, though. <laughs> you, you can, can smoke yeah, there. we should go Stogie there. Santa wouldn't have had his problem if he could. That's right. He wouldn't have. We'll just next <laughs> episode in the summer, yeah. we'll all go to Bonachore. They'll love it. Uh, uh, you all heard that. Um, but um, I agree with you. Point three is very important. Depending on Great what you... Grapefruit juice? Bad. Yeah. Not, like, like, that's, well, a, that's the point. It's not, n- n- it's it's not, not even really mm. good or bad as much as it is what you've just eaten or drank. Right is going to change dramatically in a lot of cases the flavor of that cigar. Mm-hmm. There's no question. There's just no doubt about like, it. Like I think it takes your ability to assess the cigar down several notches so that when you go smoke it the next time, drink water and see how it changes, and then maybe smoke one more and then form your full opinion about the cigar. When we're blending cigars, we're always, I shouldn't say always, we first try the test blends like first thing in the morning, yeah, a clean palate, clean palate, Absolutely. clean right, palate. Right. Literally, we Time go when day. he yeah. came down, when Barry came down with me, and we went down uh, and we were uh, working on the Eastlero. What ended up being the Eastlero with Toastus, yeah, yeah. That it's and that's the case every time. You, he picks you up in the morning. You go out and you don't want to. I'll have coffee because I got to have coffee in the morning, or else it's a horrible day. Oh, well, I agree. But by the time you get there, that's off your palate, and mm-hmm. you can smoke with a clean palate. And then when you smoke it later in the day, after lunch, for instance, you'll be like, wow, this is a little it's bit different. different. Yeah. It, 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 it's very important. Yeah, and so don't be afraid to revisit, obviously, and, uh, and let some time pass, obviously, um, but I like to smoke the same cigar um, more than two, three times before I form an opinion or go back and let it rest in my humidor. For a sure. week, a little bit of age on that. I mean, sure. a, a week is probably like the minimum. I mean, and, a couple of days probably you. isn't going to do much. I think at least a week or more. And here's the change. other thing. For instance, um, this cigar literally was in the Dominican Republic until yesterday. Mm-hmm. I promise you, within two days, it's going to taste different than it does now. So I guess it's already very week, enjoyable. If it's going through travel oh, less than a week, even well, the it. climate change alone yeah. is so dramatic. It's like that New Orleans thing. One day in New Orleans in July, and the cigars change. Yeah, the and, humidity. And so you've got to they got to temperature. I think right. both. temperature and humidity is huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Um <clears throat> also like with a Connecticut uh, broadleaf wrapper, uh really dark uh broadleaf Maduro wrapper, mm. like there's still just a lot of moisture. Like mm-hmm. sometimes it just needs to sit and level out. So right. um reviews are always size specific. I think Mike and, and Barry you guys both gave a great Explanation as to why. Uh, as to why? Yeah, that was yeah. some great detail there. I mean, I couldn't even do that justice. Did you hear that, Jared? Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what what I found in goods, I didn't have a lot of the the science the science behind it and some of the details that uh, you provided tonight. But over the time of reviewing cigars, like we were like, there is definitely different. It takes a while to to figure that out because like sure. sometimes you'll buy a couple different sizes, right? You'll smoke one. 
and then maybe later on I smoke the other one. Like once you start reviewing, <coughs> excuse me, a bunch of different cigars, you realize like sizes are like right. there's a total. Di- we realized that early on in East. We started reviewing. We're like. All these sizes are totally different. And then we don't have our favorites, yeah. right? Yeah. And very rarely we would agree and say, this is what we call the bell of the ball, right? This is the size sure. that pretty yeah. much unanimously we all felt out of this line was the one that we all liked the best. And it doesn't always happen. We all have the same bell of the ball. Some, like in your Ehrlich line, I like the Robusto the best. And I've, Really? See, I yeah. like the Churchill the best. See, I find this. I've got a couple of Churchills. Um, Maybe one of some of the other sizes, so I yeah. Yeah. fully. I, I just find the balance in that shape between the wrapper filler and the binder, and the complexity in the well, you blend. Know what? I'm going to like this in the robusto. You know, I, I just uh, and I've smoked them all. You like as the well. robusto or the Churchill? No, I love the, the Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah, but I but I I smoke the Toro and the robusto, but I just find that the Churchill has um, and, the complexity and the flavor profile. And, just and by the way, me. I hear a lot of people say that. Universal, they don't say it exactly like this, but what they're implying oftentimes is universally the bigger ring gauge, the mellower the cigar. That's not true. Not anymore. It's not true I because if you time, have a super strong was. binder filler with a milder wrapper and you go to a larger ring gauge, the binder filler plays a much l- more prominent role. Right. And you can have a cigar that has a larger ring gauge and is stronger than a Corona. Ramps up. Yep. It, so that's not true. Now, but I hear that all the time, and so it, it really is different from cigar blend to cigar blend. I, I really think one of the things I, I was saying in a previous episode was that every size is different, and all of the different sizes, regardless of whether it's a petite Corona all the way up to a 60, or if, I'm still struggling with the above 60. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm struggling with so, the above 52 myself. But, but No, but I'm saying from the small, well, I don't know. <laughs> There's a range. Maybe petite Corona to 60 ring. To me, as a reviewer, you know, doing smoking on these cigars, like that's that's the the sweet spot. That's the range, and I think that uh, every, the '60s now, and I don't think this was always the case, but the '60s now sure. are smoking equally complex flavor characteristics. Can spice, I tell all you why that, that is? In the '60s, right down to the Petit Corona, I'm evaluating. I used to kind of throw out the the '60s and be like, H- uh, "Here's why." So. Years ago, there was no Enlighten 60 ring gauges. Mike, Mike there was, the, there was no 60 ring gauges, right? right. We need Mike Bellamy so, enlightenment music. <laughs> so most the, the what what the 50 ring gauge, which uh, the popularity say the 50ish ring gauge, back 30, 40 years ago, it was a Corona. Corona was normal. 44 ring gauge was that was the go-to size, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone blended their cigars so that they were sort of in the midpoint of the larger ring gauge and smaller ring gauges. Back in 30, 40 years ago. Now that we've gone to bigger ring gauge and it's more popular, you know, you might blend to a 40 to 44 30 years ago and then branch out from that. But now that we go to a much larger, there's the popularity of 60s. 60s didn't exist 30 years ago. Yeah, right. So now that you've gone to the larger ring gauge cigars, most people, I can't speak very well, but most people will blend in the 48 to 52 size range, usually around a 50, because you want to be able to say, I could go to 60 or 40 and not have much variation. And I, so I, the I, reason so that the 60s is, now are, are more complex is where you're starting because this, yeah. years ago, before the, when the 60s first came on the market, people were still blending to a size that meant 60 was way far from that size. That's not the case anymore. But this I think what, anything below a 38 and above a 60 is still... I don't know. I just find those to be drastically different, in my opinion. Mm. It's hard. The smaller the range, the harder to get the blend right. Yeah. For sure. I was going to say more, more of Joe's wheelhouse with the, uh, the business aspect, but you adjust your uh, marketing campaign more towards the, uh, the larger ring gauges now, seeing the popularity? or mm. the No. Course? I just, I, I don't really, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is I think the, the industry is going back a, more, believe it or not, it's not as in vogue to smoke a larger ring gauge. Now, in Rhode Island, it is. And in certain other markets, the larger ring gauges are much more predominant. But if you go to Atlanta, for instance, where I do, I'm there all the time, there aren't a lot of large ring gauge smokers. There are some, but they're not, most people smoke sort of the normal 48, 50, 52. Churchill, yeah. Right? And and they're not interested in the large. Now, there are some, but the the popularity of the larger ring gauges in Atlanta are not what they are here. And if you go to Connecticut, New York, the, the larger ring gauges in the Northeast, for whatever reason, are dominant. 
in a lot of ways. If you go down south, that's not the, the case. If you go to Texas, it's not the case. I thought everything was bigger in right? Texas. The stakes are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can dig um, that. <laughs> and they're good, too, by the way. But um, it's not really true. And I, what I've seen, and you know, I, I measure, obviously, as a cigar in company owner, what sizes sell. Gordos are not my largest seller. Mm. Nationally, here in Rhode Island, they are. I think. In the Northeast, throughout most of the Northeast, they are. But not, if you go to Texas, Southeast, uh, it's not, that's Different not market, the case. Yeah. It's not the case at all. Awesome. Well, with that, that concludes Debonair Ideal for this evening. We're going to come back and talk about our Stogies of the Week, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 